Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 144 of the It's a Pictures podcast. My name is John Gilpatrick, and joining me as always is Max Colville. Happy 2023, Max. Happy New Year. How about that? I know. We're we're doing it again. Yeah, it took us like a month to come back. Yeah, it did. I I know for our loyal fans, they might have been worried about us, but we're, we're, we're back. They should have been worried about us. We were both sick. Yes, Except, we at different times, and not because we saw each other, but uh, but yeah, we uh, ended up delaying this longer than we anticipated, um, which was unfortunate. But here we are to talk about our most anticipated movies of this coming year. Yeah, I've I've, I've always looked forward to this episode. Me too. Uh, one of the things we we tend to do is we we take a big step back and look at what what we thought was going to be big winners for us in, in the previous yeah. year and you you sometimes you're surprised yeah oh, i'm surprised that like why was i excited about that like oh like you know uh i wasn't anticipating this movie what you know all this stuff like you know what were your expectations versus what reality was um usually movies that we really were excited about that didn't end up coming out so uh sometimes we repeat those and sometimes we don't we'll see uh how that looks uh for uh you know the 2022 to 23 transition but we'll get into all that in due time um should we do some news first yeah that sounds good so kind of the big news i guess is avatar uh the way of water um which we both saw and we'll also talk about later on and uh what we've been watching um, but it's, you know, crushing the box office as some people expected, but maybe others didn't. And um, I guess I'm kind of curious, like, I, I know personally I'm going to take like a big victory lap. And, and I'm sure that there's a few people who, uh, you know, have some receipts of me saying this. But I, I had told people, you know, bet the under on the opening weekend, you know, total and bet the over on the like, you know, worldwide cum, uh, yeah, during the entire theatrical run because I, yeah, just like the first one, I knew this was gonna open a little bit soft, and it did, and then it just kind of kept going and going and going, and now we're I think up to the sixth highest grossing movie of all time worldwide, and probably gonna safely slide into you know third place, right? Yeah, and I think like at the end of the day, I, I just read something today that they're it's probably going to outgross uh, Top Gun Maverick. Um, oh, domestically, you mean? Yes. Yeah, sure. The, the highest grossing twenty twenty two feature. It is crazy that like it, you know, if one of these movies isn't going to be the top grossing movie of its year, you know, when they're both like so high on the all time list. Um, and you can go back just two years when Bad Boys for Life was the box office king. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like what a what a what a run we had over that over that stretch. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Are you surprised? I am a little. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I just I was surprised. I guess like cause the novelty of 3D has died for a lot of people, uh-huh. and. Um, I don't think that's the case for people going into the movie theaters to see. I think that I think they're they're asking. I want to see Avatar in 3D. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I I think it's it's the power of James Cameron, right? Like what the kind of entertainment that he provides. Um, I think uh, I tried watching Avatar one again, and I might have talked about this during the last time we 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 talked, and like how. The movie just seems built for 3D, and it's yeah, tough it to does. watch it. Like it was, and, it was fine. It was yeah, perfectly it, serviceable and not remarkable. Yeah, it, it's it really shines as a 3D feature, and I think uh, that might be the same case for Avatar too. Uh, yeah, it probably will be. Obviously, I don't know yet. I haven't watched it at home. I would like to give it a shot sometime and just sort of see what it's got to offer on that format, but. You know, I do think that, like, it was an event in a way that, like, we've had very few of those um, movie-wise, even predating the pandemic, um, outside of Marvel movies and a handful of others. And you could even say that Marvel movies aren't that anymore, I think, for a lot of people, myself included. So this was a real rarity. Um, And I think that, like, I was curious. I mean, I I, I sort of said I wasn't surprised, and I kind of predicted how this was going to play out. Um, not to pat myself on the back too hard, but, 
Um, the, the wild card for me was like the James Cameron of it all. And like, yes, like his movies like are events and, and big deal and people go to it because they sort of want to see the new James Cameron thing. But at the same time, I'm like, is that still the case? Because even when, like when Avatar came out, you had people are roughly our age who like, you know, kind of came of age around Titanic and like knew that that was a big deal and maybe spent the 12 intervening years, like seeing the Terminator for the first time and seeing aliens for the first time and all this stuff. But like now you've had like 25 years where the only new James Cameron movie was the original Avatar. And a lot of people were born in that period. And a lot of people who like were born and don't maybe know or have the same connection to his older movies from the nineties and eighties as we do. Um, and who like don't have the same connection to movies in general. So it was like, are young people going to go see this and really care at all? And I guess the answer is like, I don't know what the answer is. I don't have like a demographic breakdown of audience in front of me, but it's doing well enough for me to assume that like people of all ages are kind of going to check it out. Um, which is a good thing. Um, I think, I think it's good that like, we're going to have this big movie that's not original per se, but not, you know, from the same kind of like handful of franchises that are always crushing, you know, uh, the box office with multiple titles every year or every few years. Well, um, well call me when the fifth one comes out. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fair point. I mean, if it comes out, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I do. Maybe there's going to be fatigue. Maybe like this one's doing as well as it did because we had that long break and people, whether they thought a lot about avatar in the intervening years or not, like they were excited to see this. And I think that like, all the clues were there from its re-release, which did really well back in like September, right? Yeah, I think it did well. I and mean, that was like one of the like probably twenty highest grossing movies of the year. So, um, so yeah, we'll it, we'll see where it ends up. I think I was looking at it the other day, and, and there's like a big gap between the top two, which are uh, Endgame and the original Avatar, and then the like third highest grossing movie worldwide all time, which I don't remember what it is, but maybe as a star war or another Avengers or something or that like that Spider-Man far from home thing. Say like, maybe that I can't remember exactly, but, um, but I think, uh, you know, from everything you could project and tell, this is going to kind of fall somewhere in between those top two and, and the rest. Um, so pretty good, uh, pretty good job. And then Titanic will uh, have a chance to pad its total in uh, February. Right. Yeah, like what I what was funny is like I thought like he was just gonna like re-release the same 3D cut that they released like maybe, I think it was maybe five years ago I saw it in IMAX uh-huh. and um, probably twenty year anniversary. Yeah, probably. And um, f- some of the stuff I was reading is that he gave it that um, that uh, high frame rate pass. Oh and, wow! Okay. Uh, and so I don't know if that's really gonna be like different in some ways but yeah I it's know. funny I, I like the movie enough I, I think it i think it is like a really good movie what uh, titanic to, or avatar yeah, the uh, titanic yeah um but uh i don't know if i necessarily need to see it in the theaters again but I, i'd be interested in the 4k presentation i never saw it um when, when it re-released in 3d um i only had seen it in theaters you know in 1997 yeah. or 8, 98 maybe but um I, when the trailer came on, my wife and I, uh, during Avatar, she was kind of, afterwards we talked about it and it's like, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing that in the theaters again. Like, you know, after 25 years, it'd be kind of right. fun, but like, I don't need to see it in 3D. And I, I felt similarly, I'm like, it'd be fun to go see it, but I don't know that I need to do that experience that way. Like Avatar felt right. Titanic doesn't feel like it needs that. I don't really get the appeal, but, uh, but we'll see. Alrighty. In other news, the we're in full swing of award season. I guess like I'm talking to you right now, and we're like waiting for the Oscar nominations to come out. I think they yeah, come out days, like right? yeah in a few days. Uh, but so far, uh, you can number you can really kind of make the pool of films that are going to be nominated like really tight and from all the precursors it's looking like everything everywhere all at once and the banshees of inna sharon are certainly locks and maybe uh two of the highest um awarded films of the year easily the baftas 
uh, were announced this morning and surprising everybody, uh, the, the German film uh, All Quiet on the Western Front uh, picked up 14 nominations, including Best Film. And um, that, that was a big shock to a lot of people, at least over here wa- watching and who like to play a predictor for these awards things. Um, because some some would argue that it wasn't even the strongest international feature this year. Well, sure, um, but it, you know it's definitely a big, uh, you know, it's got a big studio behind it, and uh, I think it's kind of broadly appealing in a way that something like Decision to Leave is not going to be as as much, you know. I guess so these award have, groups. Have, have you watched All Quiet on the Western Front? I haven't, but I mean, I've I've talked to people who have. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's it's good. It's fine. It's a nice war movie. And it's accessible enough on Netflix, even though it's in another language. Um, and uh, I just, I you know, I think that, like, I'm not surprised that a movie like this is doing well with awards groups. Like, if it was in English, I think people would be sort of assuming and pegging it as, like, some sort of Oscar frontrunner based off of its kind of pedigree of the movie being, you know, a remake of a movie that's already won best picture and being, you know, kind of a potent story um, and so on. And the fact that it's German makes it fly a little bit more under the radar. But um, I, I sort of had, maybe this was maybe, yeah, I, I'm not as plugged in as, as you are, um, but I had sort of, pegged it for a best picture nomination now for a little while um without any other like obvious netflix contenders it just seems like yeah it's probably going to get a spot um certainly it was a lot of baftas and they only have five or six movies i think for best film and and, yeah. and to favor british movies um but maybe this is you know on the right side of the pond they were going to just kind of go for it yeah um I, I guess netflix realized where they're most critically uh, appreciated film was i mean from their stuff this year like most of it i didn't even bother to put on <laughs> right, yeah. um including all quiet on the western front i i really only put on pinocchio and, and glass onion mm-hmm. um but uh yeah I, I can i could see where it could happen but i'm still i'm not, i'm not ready to say it's it's in that pool yet fair enough We'll find out in a few days. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, along the same lines, the Oscars uh, have announced their hosts um, who are going to be Riz Ahmed and uh, Allison Williams. Um, and uh, they also, I guess, announced that they're going to show all the bro- uh, all the categories on the broadcast, which was kind of a big uh, kerfuffle like a, a year or two. I can't remember. Was that last year or the year before the year pre COVID? I don't remember exactly where they said they were going to have a few awards during the commercial breaks and people. I think, I think, I think the actual show with the, without the, the categories was last year. And then they found that the show ran just as long. Oh, it was <laughs> just last See, Like, like time is like a flat circle. Like I didn't remember that being last. Uh, maybe something happened during last year's show that kind of distracted me from all other things that happened. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> I know about that thing. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, I guess they're uh, undoing that. Um, but Riz Ahmed and Allison Williams, like they have, something in common or do they not i don't know i don't they're both actors in hollywood (laughs) yeah i mean it it kind of reminds me yeah it's james franco and and hathaway yeah Yeah. (laughs) i mean like i mean hopefully they can uh be more entertaining uh you can currently see allison williams and uh megan which is uh also smashing expectations at the box office yeah and is going to have a sequel Yes, it is. Um, so, uh, yeah. What is Riz Ahmed in anything right now? I don't think he has anything going on currently. So at least like Franco and Hathaway, like we're in big movies at the time. Yeah. I guess Allison Williams. I mean, Megan's a big movie. Yeah. Um, and Riz Ahmed is an Oscar nominee from previous years. I think he's a winner because he was a uh, he was an executive producer on a short or something. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I was referring specifically to uh, Sound of Metal. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, but that's cool. I did not know that. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Um, so cool. Okay. Well, that'll be different. Um, Going to be a tough kind of, I think, show to host. Uh, you know, with the obvious elephant uh, from last year in the room. 
but uh, hopefully it's a good time and, and, you know, we'll see. I'll, I'll be watching. Um, should we do our most anticipated? Yeah. Do, do you want me to uncover the list here? Yeah. So let's look at last year's. All right. So we're going into our main topic here, our most anticipated film. And we always do um, just to let people know, like a sort of uh, category base. So we have uh, action movies, we have sci-fi, we have comedy, we have prestige movie, which is kind of, you know, the, um, the Oscar stuff, I guess you can say. Uh, we have a wild card, which is a movie that like we're excited for. We're also a little bit uncertain as to like whether it's going to be good or kind of uh, our thing or not. And then our number one most anticipated. Right. And uh, so for 2022, John, have you have you looked at this? I mean, um, I'm looking at it right now. It's it's not too bad. It's not I mean, that bad. It's better than we've had before. Yes. I mean, like, I think we had our hardest time with comedy and I think. I think that will be the same case this year. But... Yeah, maybe, maybe not. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, for me, my action films were the Batman and Top Gun Maverick, which I both enjoyed. Yeah. I fi was Black Panther Wakanda forever. Fine movie. Maybe not be as good as the original. Uh, comedy was this like Judd Apatow, the bubble that was like on Netflix. Oh <laughs> yeah. That it, actually did come out. Right. I was like, what is that? I think it got destroyed. I assumed that it was a movie that never got released, um, Yeah, but it might as well not have. Yeah. I did not watch it. So that was an, uh, uh, an oops. Yeah. Uh, Thor love and thunder. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. Um, prestige Babylon. I did enjoy Babylon, but it's a, it's a currently divisive film. That was more a wild card. <laughs> yeah. Um, white noise. I have not watched yet. Yeah. Um, my wild cards were Nope, which yeah, Nope was fine in the whale, better acting than actually being a movie. Yeah. And then most anticipated was killers of the flower moon, which uh, has still not come out yet. And, the Fablemans, which I happened to spell wrong here too, which was probably <laughs> the most common like misspelled. I know, yeah. At all, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the Fablemans too. Cool. Okay. So yeah, pretty good list. Mine's not too bad either. So for action, I had Spider-Man Across the Spider Verse Part One, which uh, did not come out. Is coming out this year. Um, I don't know. Is it still called Spider-Man Across the Spider Verse Part One? I don't think it is. Um, I maybe they dropped the part one, but. Uh, that's coming out this year. And then my other was The Woman King, which uh, came out, did really well, was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. Did you yeah. did you, did you see it? Yeah, I liked it. I, oh, I've good. seen a lot of stuff since you and I talked right, last. Right, One cool. of the benefits of having COVID is I watched a ton of movies. Um, <laughs> the uh, sci-fi, uh, my choices were White Noise, which you had in your prestige category. I saw, uh, did not particularly enjoy White Noise on Netflix. Um, I, I told somebody after I watched it, I was like, there's a kernel of a really good movie in there, but I don't think I'm interested in ever watching it again to find out what that is. Is, is uh, it really a science fiction movie? Uh, not so much, but there's definitely like elements of it for sure. Yeah. Um, and then Avatar 2, The Way of Water, uh, which uh, we'll talk about later. Uh, my comedy was Beth and Don, which is a movie that didn't come out. It's supposed to come out this year. It's uh, written and directed by Nicole Holof Center. Um, who I think, well, she's done a few movies. I was, I, I've seen some of her movies. I really like all the ones I've seen. I don't think I've seen everything. Um, and, uh, for prestige, I have tar, which of course was one of the big, you know, critically beloved movies of the year. Um, I obviously I've talked at ad nauseum about how much I love Todd field as a director and tar was his first movie in almost 15 years. And uh, it's really good. So you should check it out. Uh, and then my second prestige movie was Women Talking, which uh, also is very critically acclaimed. Uh, Sarah Polly movie. We mentioned her uh, uh, before we started recording. Um, and uh, I thought Women Talking was good. It was, I don't think, quite on the level as Tar. What did you think of Women Talking? I loved it. Yeah, did you? Okay, cool. Um, my wild cards uh, were Elvis, which... Uh, I think I was a little bit on the fence of because I haven't enjoyed most of these kind of musical biopics, but I was curious because it's Baz Luhrmann, who's an interesting director. I think Elvis is fine. Um, and then Nope uh, was also one of my wild cards as it was yours. And I think, uh, I think I'm higher on than you are. Although I think I, we both agreed it was Jordan Peele's third best movie to date. 
And then finally, my most anticipated, like yours, I uh, didn't have the Fable and Zinger, uh, but I did have Killers of the Flower Moon, which uh, will be a 2023 title from director Martin Scorsese. So, pretty good. I think overall we did all right. Yeah. I there mean, are movies yeah. on here that are going to be in one or both of our top 10 lists of the year, so which I think is a good, good job by us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely like when we when we do our list and we still plan to do it. We decided to do the anticipated first. That way, our favorites could be like closer to the Oscars, I guess, because we're still gonna have to be talking about these movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that makes sense actually. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I definitely think across those movies that we picked, there's there's a few in them that are definitely in my top ten. Yeah, same. So. Um, so should we jump over to our current list and do you want to go first with your action movies? All right. I didn't pick like multiple movies this year. I tried to like behave and pick like one movie that I really Okay. I did to. multiples, I think in every category except for my most anticipated. Okay, good. And that's fine. I just uh, I I can easily add an, another action film right off the top of my head. Sure, sure yeah. Um but first, my most anticipated action film was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Okay. Um, we've been waiting a few years for this one. This is not directed by Steven Spielberg. This time it's directed by the director of Logan and Ford v. Ferrari. Um, James Mangold. Yeah, James Mangold. Um, yes, Harrison Ford is older, but thankfully we have better CGI than ever. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think like... Um, I, I think that there's still going to be plenty of action in it. Um, Mads Mikkelsen is promises to be like one of the big bads in the movie. And I love him as an actor too. And uh, Phoebe Waller bridge of Fleabag fame is, I guess she plays like uh, Indy's niece or something. something she, like that. Yeah. From the, from what we see in the trailer. Um, yeah. I, I think like, it has the right pieces, like not unlike kingdom of the crystal skull had the right pieces. <laughs> Um, but I still get excited about these Indiana Jones films. And, um, there was a rumor at the time, not really necessarily a rumor. I guess John Williams was thinking that would be his last score ever. Something came out last week or so that said he's not retiring from film scoring after all. Um, so, uh, hopefully we'll get more John Williams scores. Uh, but, uh, I'm certainly going to be, um, intrigued by that as well um yeah excited about that one and i guess if i had another action film it wouldn't surprise people because the third one appeared on my list previously but john wick 4 i uh sure. i'm looking forward to that new entry in the franchise keanu reeves i've liked all the previous ones i think like i uh, this might be funny to some people but i'd almost consider like john wick 3 a comedy because of how bonkers yeah, it is and i can see that i i i it's one of my favorite experiences like going to a press screening i like died laughing in the theater <laughs> as like the, the dogs are like mauling these guys and it's just like this is just over the top ridiculousness and i'm here for it so i'm interested to see how they up the ante for this one um i guess like uh, they they have more like famous um, martial arts actors in it. Uh, I think like the guy who plays like Ip Man is uh, is going to be in this one too. So uh, yeah, count me in for John Wick Four. Yeah, definitely no complaints there. Uh, so my most anticipated action movie is Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Um, you know we've talked about Mission Impossible movies on the podcast before a huge fan of the franchise. I feel like they've been kind of upping the ante with those movies for several installments really ever since ghost protocol came out, kind of just like one after the next, where it's just like, I can't believe they're continuing to make these as good as they are. It's really seems to be like this connection that Cruz has with the director, Christopher McQuarrie. Um, and, uh, I think, you know, this dead reckoning, uh, they filmed two films back to back, um, it's really kind of bringing back like characters from throughout the entire franchise, which they've always done. But, um, you know, in this case, it's, uh, the, uh, kind of his handler from the, uh, uh, what is it called? The, uh, IMF, um, from the very first movie is kind of like the, one of the bad guys here, which is sort of like 
amazing. I'm still like a little bit curious as to like how they're going to do that and what the sort of purpose is, but um, kind of like I trust in whatever they're going to do with this franchise for now. And uh, super excited for this one, especially after, I mean, uh, Tom Cruise also had such a great, you know, year this year in 2022 with Top Gun Maverick. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of people checking into Mission Impossible, maybe who didn't even previously because they saw Top Gun Maverick and were reminded how much they enjoy his antics on screen, at least. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that's my most anticipated action movie. My uh, second, you know, kind of runner up, I guess. And I, I don't actually even know if this is going to be an action movie. I'm just sort of projecting. Um, but Napoleon, which is uh, this uh, going to be this new movie by uh, Ridley Scott. Um, I, I, I'm interested in for a number of reasons. One, I'm just kind of like Napoleon's an interesting historical figure for a lot of reasons. Um, and secondly, of course, like it was the big unmade Steve, uh, Stanley Kubrick project. And, um, I guess I read his script is going to be made into a separate Napoleon project, maybe next year, or maybe this year rather, or, uh, in the near future, if not. Um, so, uh, so this isn't based on that, but I, I, I think that was like a movie called like kit bag. Does that sound? Um, this might familiar? be kit bag actually. I, I can't remember now. Yeah, this is formally called Kit Bag. All right. But uh, I, I'm sort of projecting it as an action movie because of Ridley Scott. And, like, whenever he does these historical epics, they are pretty action-oriented between Gladiator on the good side and, you know, the Exodus of Gods and Kings or whatever that was, the Moses movie on the not-so-good side, perhaps. So I, I am assuming that this is going to have some, you know, pretty epic war scenes and battle scenes. Also starring Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon, which is kind of amazing casting. Uh, so I'm really curious to see like what kind of like twisted take he's going to put on this character. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, you know, you could throw this one into a few categories. It could end up being more prestige certainly is a wild card, but I'm very curious about it. And I thought it was worth including here. Okie dokie. So sci-fi is next. I bet you could guess what mine was. Well, I know what you're going to have here. Assuming it was not your most anticipated, I know what's going to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Yeah, Dune Part (laughs) 2. Even though I was... I I don't want to say, like, kind of, like, not super excited about Dune 1, because I think it was a accurate portrayal of the novel. I think my biggest problem was that it was ultimately half a movie and both mm-hmm. the uh, continuation uh, finally coming out and completing the story. I'm very excited to see what happens. And um, the first tune was really awesome to see in the movie theater. And I think it's like, it's one of those projects that like uh, holds up, I guess like under scrutiny, if you like are like, Oh, I wonder if it's going to be like this big, like, um technical showcase and stuff like that and it definitely was um i I remember being in the theater and just saying like oh yeah now i know why uh denis villeneuve wanted to make it so like people had to go to the theater famously it came out during that hbo max kerfuffle where they were doing like day and date stuff and there was a lot of people angry uh i can understand why he was (laughs) yeah um uh, so yeah, uh, for those who don't remember, this one has like Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya and Rebecca Ferguson and uh, plenty of our big name cast. I guess like from what I remember the story, uh, they're gonna have Florence Pugh in it, but she doesn't necessarily have a big role in the first book. Um, and then another big name was um, what's his name, uh, Austin Butler, who just played Elvis, right? Is- go ahead and play the part that sting played and then and the the david lynch version so it's it's a it's a pretty big part and uh that'd be fun to see austin butler go against timothy chalamet um yeah yeah i'm curious i mean i'm definitely curious like what austin butler is gonna do next like he had this part you know he kind of came out of nowhere with this elvis part like which he's fine in the movie like everybody's I th- yeah i think he's gonna win the oscar And I think it's because, like, everybody just loves when he does his Elvis impersonation, like, you know, on an interview or on Saturday Night Live or whatever. 
and people just go like crazy. It's like, oh my God, he sounds so much like Elvis. And it's just like, I wonder if he's just going to be stuck as that forever. But, you know, it's <laughs> it, like, you know, no, for real. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough thing for people to forget. But yeah, a big movie like this could help. He, he, he's still doing it in interviews. It, I know. Well, yeah, because people love it and he wants to win an Oscar. I don't blame him. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Um, but, you know, when he's trying to, like, do press for, you know, some small indie movie that he's passionate about in three years, and they're going to be like, do an Elvis for us, Austin. He's going to be re- It's going to get old fast. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm also very excited about Dune 2. It's it's my sort of, you know, secondary in this category. Probably my number one, if I'm being honest, but I knew it was going to be yours. So I wanted to talk about something else. I would say my only, like, hesitation, and, and it's small. Like, I, I don't have the same connection as you to the source material. We talked about this, you know, quite a bit when the movies came out. Um, or the or first part came out, rather. And uh, I watched that kind of blind, not knowing anything about Dune, besides that there's like giant worms and whatnot. And I really loved that movie. And then I watched shortly after that the David Lynch version, which I'd never seen before. I watched the whole thing, so I saw the whole story. And I know that that movie is like schlocky and not well regarded. But I also would say that like I was not super like high on like the story arc of everything that happens after where this first Villeneuve movie cuts out. So I'm a little bit kind of like, Oh, like maybe this is the story that I'm as interested in as I was the first stuff. So uh, we'll see, but I'm definitely, you know, I think I'm looking forward to seeing the theater. I did not see the first part of the theater and, you know, kind of regret that in hindsight, I'm guessing they'll re-release it. Um, and I'm yeah, that'd be fun to do like uh, the whole Dune experience. Yeah, right? yeah, which should be really fun. So hopefully we can do something like that. But uh, but yeah, definitely anticipated for me as well. And then you had another movie. What, what's this one here? Yeah, so my most anticipated sci-fi is called Civil War. Um, and it's not a movie I knew much about until I was kind of doing some research here. But it's the going to be the newest movie from uh, director Alex Garland, who had a movie called Men come out in 2022 which i never saw seemed like it was his kind of least well received movie uh to date um but his previous two are movies that i'm very very fond of really good sci-fi movies annihilation and uh, ex machina um and this is uh basically it's called civil war it's set in like the near future in the united states um so you can kind of guess uh certain things that happen but it's you know apparently going to be a uh, you know science fiction at least tinged um and so uh, i'm curious about that uh what that kind of is going to look like and uh maybe i'm just kind of a masochist of like wanting to see my future and my country's future uh <laughs> but uh but i i've liked most yeah you know, all the movies i've seen of his i didn't like i said didn't see men um but he's done really good sci-fi to date and um uh, you know, in wanting to select something outside of Dune, this kind of jumped out to me. Yeah, my my uh, other one was uh, the Spider Verse uh, sequel, sure, which uh, I talked about last year. Yeah, so I didn't. I tried not to like repeat movies that I was anticipating, and so I I didn't have it on my list last year, so I yeah. gave myself a pass. Fair enough, that's fair. Yeah. I I could still uh, be excited about it. Cool. So uh, I think comedy's up next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have a long line for comedy. I have a couple here, yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. So I'll you go like, first then. I, I okay, I'll go first. So comedy, I was like, yeah, normally this is like one of the tougher categories because they just don't make like the same type of comedies that they used to that, you know, we remember from the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, we, have the, have to, we have the same number of ones. So I thought we probably would, yeah. So you have to dig a little bit and sometimes come up with like <laughs> different sort of titles. Um both of our most anticipated comedy uh, for 2023 is Barbie, which uh, I mean, not something I ever really expected to say or think. Um, but I, yeah, ever since it was announced that like Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach as a co-writer, were going to make this Barbie movie. Uh, you know, you can't help but be like curious. Um, and then they got a pretty good cast with Margot Robbie playing Barbie herself. And, uh what's his name uh 
Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, yeah, thank you, playing Ken, and uh, you know, and a handful of other actors who are also you know good. Arby's and Kens, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, then you saw the trailer, which was just like really funny, and like yeah, the teaser trailer is fantastic. It's so good. It's just basically like the uh, ape scenes from uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Um, but about how like uh, dolls used to be babies, and then what if there was one that was like a fashionable adult? And uh, you know they do the jump cut to Barbie, and it's, it's very funny. And it's just like you could tell what this movie is going to be, um, and it looks really funny. Like I think I'm going to have a good time seeing it. Um, I asked my wife after I saw, I was like, "What did you think of the Barbie trailer?" She's like. I didn't think I'd want to see a Barbie movie, but I kind of want to see this one. <laughs> I, mean, I don't like even know the the tone because they obviously as a teaser it doesn't show much. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of dancing. I don't know like if it's like parts of it are musical or like, yeah. Caitlin asked me that too. She's like, "Is it a musical though?" I was like, "I don't think so," but I don't actually know that for sure. Um, I, you know, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know what the plot's supposed to be or anything. It just seems like it's going to be like you know a pretty tongue in cheek satire i guess or celebration i don't know but it looks like a just a good fun funny time john it was funny like i showed shannon the trailer and she instantly knew due to the the dress that margot robbie was wearing like what movie it was supposed to be yeah. and i was like i don't know that dress it doesn't mean anything to me and she's like how do you not know the iconic like first barbie dress i was like sorry that was gi joe it's like <laughs> i was not barbie um but yeah no it's uh it, i think it's gonna be good um my i mean it's yours also so i want to give you a chance to speak yeah I, I mean most of the same stuff i i think like the pedigree behind it is really interesting um i i, I find like the behind the scenes like action going on really funny john i don't know if if you thought this at all but i'm like i have my like uh eyes on on the uh industry and I think Barbie is a Warner Brothers film, and uh-huh. it's going to open the same day as Christopher Nolan's new film, Oppenheimer, yes, right. which used to be a Warner Brothers uh, director. And like, I can't like help but think it's like sticking it to Christopher Nolan for leaving, and like we're gonna open like our big tent pole like opposite yours, like literally the same day. Yeah, that's very and, interesting. And see what happens. What? Um, who's releasing Oppenheimer? Uh, Universal got oh. the rights for it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Because Nolan was famously very upset. Yeah, he was after pissed Tenet. about the tenant stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Well, that's very interesting. I I didn't know about that stuff. I knew that they were coming out the same weekend. I thought it was a little strange, but also thought it was pretty. You know, it was maybe smart counter programming. Right. Maybe there's some pettiness involved there as well. Um, some of my other titles, I have Beth and Don on my list, which is so funny because. I don't remember it being on my list last year, um, but I saw <laughs> it. It, it showed up again. I saw it in you know some of my reading, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds fun! I love Nicole Hall of Center. I'll put this on the list." You're um, still interested in it. <laughs> I'm still interested in it. It's, I like her movies; they're good. And this one um, is uh, stars uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, like uh, Enough Said did, which is sort of you know probably one of her more well known movies. One of the ones that I'm uh yeah biggest fan of of of, you know the few movies of hers i've seen so uh, i thought that was kind of funny um and then i also have asteroid city on here which is one of two wes anderson movies that's coming out in uh 2023 this one will be the earlier of the two it's coming out this summer uh just a big fan of his movies this is like sort of at a uh convention of science fiction or science fans or something like that in like the mid 20th century. Um, and then finally on my list is magic Mike's last dance, which comes out uh, in February. I'm super excited about it. Um, Steven Soderbergh is directing after not directing XXL. And I find that just like very interesting where he made what I thought was like a very good movie in the first magic Mike. And then he kind of like retires from filmmaking and does all that stuff. Somebody comes and like does a sequel, which is like, I think, much better than the first magic Mike, even though I like the first magic Mike XXL is amazing. And, uh, now he's out of retirement. I think making like really good movies for the most part, like almost like as good as like he was at his peak in my opinion. Um, and, uh, now he wants to do another magic Mike movie. I'm like, yeah, like let's do it. 
Um, so that I'm super excited about. And I have it as a comedy because I think for the most part, like both of the first movies are, even though they're not like, you know, constantly laugh out loud, jokey comedies. Like there's a lot of laughs to be had in both of those movies. So uh, I think it qualifies. Yeah, I, I I'd probably agree with that. I never saw XXL. It's like one oh, of those movies so good. Oh my that, God. I, that I want to see because people absolutely love it. They say it's like better than the original. It is. It's uh, so good. It's outrageously <laughs> funny. So, yeah, I definitely need to see that. Uh, John, I did uh, see a trailer for a movie that I would add to anticipated comedy. Uh-huh. It is coming out. Uh, it's premiering at the Sundance Film Festival, and then it was going wide at the end of April. It's called Polite Society, okay. and it's this new movie by the uh, We Are Lady Parts series creator, uh, Nita Manzor, and it's like uh, it's like an Indian-based uh, martial arts and comedy romance movie, and uh, the, the trailer is hilarious. It's like one of the girls wants to like be a uh, stunt person, and uh, so she, she got to gets involved with this um family that uh wants to marry her sister away and uh wants to fight back and uh it just it looks really funny i'm so i i i'm not covering sundance this year but uh i did manage i bought like four tickets for like digital stuff okay um this wasn't included in the digital stuff so i was kind of disappointed about that but um i'm looking forward to what people say and um Seeing it in April when it uh, opens wide. Cool. That sounds interesting. Um, okay. So I think we're moving on to Prestige. Yeah. So why don't you go first? Okay. So this one I did pick a few. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, first is one that we haven't talked about much at all yet. And it's called Maestro. Yep. And it's the new Bradley Cooper movie following... Uh, his directorial effort with um, Star is Born a few years back. Um, this one, he plays uh, composer Leonard Bernstein. And uh, I, I guess, like, famously, uh, I, it might have been Spielberg or someone like had it in mind to do it as a project, but, like, they, were, they told Bradley Cooper that, like, he had to take it on and do it next. And, no pressure, um, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, I just saw, uh, I think it's a, a good vehicle for him and I'm excited to see what he'll do with it. Uh, the next movie, I don't know very much about, except that when Netflix announced um, its movies coming this year, that they said that this movie is expected to come in November. Yeah. Um, so that is David Fincher's new movie, The Killer. And um, I know next to nothing about this one. And, but except that it stars Michael Fassbender, um, I I still am somebody who liked Mank. <laughs> um, I, I I typically like David Fincher movies. Yeah. Um, so I I'm, I'm there to see what he does next, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, this is another great one. And the last one, which we had already mentioned, uh, is Oppenheimer. Uh, I think like anybody who's in Hollywood, who is not appearing in Barbie that weekend, is appearing in Oppenheimer. Uh, it stars uh, uh, Killian Murphy as the lead, um, but has tons of other stars, including Robert Downey Jr. Uh, in supporting roles in this movie. Um, it, Universal has been spending a ton on, on the budget for it and hyping it up all year long. I'm, I'm sure we'll see a lot more about it. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, pro- probably go see those uh, big seventy millimeter IMAX screens, right? He's yeah. got to do that like large format, so uh, we'll we'll see what happens there. Cool. Yeah, uh, I have that as an alternative uh, al- alternate, excuse me, on my list. Oppenheimer. Um, the trailer I thought looked really good. I'm excited about it. I have some hesitation because I would say both like the last two Christopher Nolan movies were misses for me. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous, uh, just that like, maybe I'm not on the same wavelength as him anymore. Um, but we'll see. Um, still, still definitely a a title that, uh, I'm excited about. Um, my most anticipated, a prestige, if you will, title is, uh, Ferrari, which is, uh, 
primarily because it's a new Michael Mann movie, which I wasn't sure was ever going to happen. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, hasn't made a movie in eight years. Yeah, I know he's always wanted to do a movie like this. I think Ford versus Ferrari was for a long time kind of like, you know, something that his name was attached to in some capacity. Maybe it actually ended up being like that he, you know, had some producer credit or something on it. But um, it's just like kind of a passion of his. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited that he's finally making it. Um, it's starring Adam Driver uh, as the founder of Ferrari. Um, and, uh, you know, he's done a good job. He did a pretty decent job as a Italian in House of Gucci, I thought. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, he's kind of a go-to for a variety of different, you know, big directors. And now he's going to do his Michael Mann movie. So good, good job by him. Um and then the other one I uh, threw in here uh, I thought was worth discussing was uh, called Blitz, which I hadn't really seen too, too much about, but um, apparently is going to be the newest uh, Steve McQueen movie, who I know we're both fans of. Last time we saw him, it was uh, with Small Axe, which just got announced as a box set with Criterion Collection, which is pretty cool. Um, before that, it was Widows and then 12 Years a Slave. Uh, 10 years ago now as the best picture winner. Who's that crazy? Um, Blitz is going to be about the uh, uh, London bombings during World War II. So uh, sounds, you know, like an interesting, uh, interesting fit. Um, g- probably a good chance for him to, you know, kind of uh, blow out his budget if, he, if, if he's so inclined. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll do a good job. He's kind of, uh, you know, all hits from him so far, at least, you know, uh, in terms of quality. So, uh, excited about that as well. Did you end up watching all five uh, small acts? No, I didn't. I didn't. All right, because I because I watch I, well, I watched two of them. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, I definitely saw two, maybe three. I can't remember. Okay, so it was a little bit of a blur. That was twenty twenty. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of <laughs> still interested in like picking up the box set. I guess oh, I know I could, just, yeah. I could I know I could just watch them on Amazon <laughs> if I was so. Yeah, I just think it's like a cool thing to own. I mean. It's the case with a lot of Criterion movies, like right, yeah. <laughs> you have the channel, you have other ways. HBO Max is a bunch, but there's some things you just want to own. And I feel like that might be one of them. Alrighty, um, yeah, I was interested in Ferrari too. I mean, like, I am a little bit colder on Michael Mann. Yeah, like at, at least his more recent stuff. I mean, like, I really love Collateral and Heat, and The Insider is really good um but there's a lot of stuff in there like i don't see eye to eye with people who enjoy like miami vice or black hat like i don't i think those movies are terrible so um, oh. i i i hope that uh it's michael mann of of heat instead <laughs> uh we'll see i hard to say right i mean black hat was eight years ago um and it's an awesome freaking movie but uh that's okay to each his own um what next up is wild card so um why don't you go first there oh you see i could have picked a lot for wild card oh but, yeah uh but i okay, went yeah. with, with a guy who uh i've done wild card before because he is truly the definition of wild card for me and that's the new uh, Yorgos Lanthimos film, Poor Things. And uh, it was like, for some time, it was expected in uh, 22. And then it became clear that it was a, a 23 film. And um, I guess like his muse these days is uh, Emma Stone, because I think she she appears in Poor Things. And yeah. she's, she's already attached to his new film, which is just called And. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know too much about it. I know... Um, Yorgos Lanthimos is hit or miss with me. Like, I, I don't know if I'd say I enjoy The Lobster because that's a tough movie to enjoy. Oh, I love that movie. I, I think it's like really interesting. <laughs> and then like I, I totally skipped out on Killing of a Sacred Deer. I wouldn't watch that. I didn't watch um, that either. Um, but I did enjoy The Favorite, and I think like I still like to rewatch that movie. I think like Olivia Coleman in that is fantastic. So um, good. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I could do poor things. Um, since, uh, we're going to list a few other things here. Um, there's a new movie by the director of we're all going to the world's fair called I saw the TV glow. And it just had like a plot synopsis that I thought was like really interesting. And, um, that kind of made me interested in the project. 
Um, I want to share it with you here. Um, it says it follows two teenagers who bond over their shared love of a scary television show, but the show mysteriously gets canceled. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm sure like a lot of people listening might not have seen we're all going to the world's fair. It's kind of like this, like really low budget horror movie. I, I think like it eventually showed up on HBO max, but um, it premiered at Sundance like two years ago. And it's, it's a really cool um, horror movie that gets under your skin. Um, so I was excited to see what Jane show and burn would do next. And, uh, I, I hope that this one, uh, finishes production and gets released this year. And I think the other one that I was interested in is this movie called the, the governess. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Let's see. That looks right. And it's by the director of, um, the last black man in San San Francisco in San Francisco. And it stars like the woman from, um, the, the worst person in the world, the, um, Renee Rivasi. Yeah. And also an actress from squid game. And let's see, let's, let's make sure I get this one. Right. Oh boy. (laughs) Yeah, here we go. Uh, it also stars Lily Rose Depp and uh, Ho Young Young. And yeah, it's just been directed by Joe Talbot. He's the director of The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Okay. So uh, that was just like a cast and director that I thought looked interesting. It's, I think it's going to be like an A24 release. So uh, that looks pretty cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Uh my uh, wild cards here, I had a few. My number one was Megalopolis, which uh, has gotten uh, quite a bit of uh, press coverage lately. This is the new Francis Ford Coppola movie, which he is spending, I don't know, $100 million or so of his own money to make. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows? It could be really great. It could be a total disaster. It's sort of the exact movie that I like to put in this spot every year. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, like, there was some pushback on the, uh, I don't remember what outlet, it was Variety or whatever, that uh, a lot of the, the story came out where it was like the revolt on the set of Megalopolis. But um, so who knows really what's going on. But uh it could end up being that there's a documentary made about the making of Megalopolis that's as good or as yeah better than the movie itself, which is sort of what happened with Apocalypse Now. <laughs> uh, so history has a way of repeating itself. Um, outside of that, um, uh, The Way of the Wind, which I'm not even totally sure if that's the actual name of the movie because it's changed a few times. It used to be called The Last Planet. Maybe it's called something else entirely. But this is the new Terrence Malick movie, Wild Card, because it's a new Terrence Malick movie. And we don't know if it's actually coming out. <laughs> we don't know if it is a real thing that's ever going to exist. Mark Rylance is playing the devil. It's basically the Bible. Uh, so, uh, you know, it'll be interesting for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then finally, um, I have a movie. I didn't really know much about this movie. It's called Night Bitch. Um, and, uh, it, but I'm interested in it cause it's the new movie from, uh, director Marielle Heller who did, uh, can you ever forgive me and a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, and it stars Amy Adams. Um, and I have his wild card because of basically the plot synopsis, which says, uh, it's about a stay at home mom who begins to worry that she may be turning into a dog. So, oh. um, I thought that sounded interesting. <laughs> um and uh it's going to be uh released uh by uh searchlight pictures so um I, i'm a fan of you know i'm a fan of maria heller and amy adams i don't really know what to make of the plot description um or really know much else about this movie but uh definitely kind of piqued my curiosity to some extent yeah i hope that like it's a good role for amy adams because like i think like for the past like five years or so yeah. she's picked like roles that like don't rough, do much yeah. for me yeah 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 i think a lot of people have uh kind of noticed that um so hopefully uh she's got a, a another great performance in her for for this one i think mary heller is somebody who could bring that out 
Well, well, what is, what is her run, John? Is it like something like hillbilly allergy? I was thinking vice? that's the one I was thinking of was El- hillbilly hillbilly allergy. Vice disenchanted. It's like yeah, it has not been. <laughs> I'm sure there's more in there, but they've yeah, been forgettable, right? Yeah, or, or just like not advisable. Um, so we're down to our most anticipated. And John, um, I did not pick the same one that i picked last year <laughs> okay Just because uh i figured that wouldn't be fun but yeah well but, i'm no fun yeah. <laughs> oh cool okay that's fun that is fun actually <laughs> so i picked the same movie i'm most excited it's just because it's, it's the movie i'm most it's, excited it's, for. it is yeah it's killers of the fire moon it's martin scorsese um, I don't want to say that like anytime Scorsese releases a movie, it's going to be my most anticipated because I don't think that's accurate. But I just surveyed the list and I'm just like, yeah, that's the movie I'm most excited for. It's him and Leo back together. Um, it's uh, Lily Gladstone's got a big part in it. I'm really excited to see that because I thought she was so good. Um, I, I think I've only seen her in Certain Women, but she was so good in that movie. Um, it's uh, Jesse Plemons is in this too. I think it's a, a great fit. You know, should be a great performance from him. And, um, you know, the book is uh, very well regarded, seems just like a great story for him to tackle, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, uh, I guess the, the only thing that's left to figure out is if it's uh, got a premiere at Cannes. Like, there's some whispers about that. Yeah, it seems like it. I, the impression I got from everything I read was that, like, it was really close to being ready to come out this year, but they just wasn't. You know, they, they wanted to hold it. And so, like, there's not much to be waiting for besides, like, what's the right time to drop it? Because presume it's going to be released by Apple. Presumably they have, you know, uh, big Oscar aspirations. So it's like, do you want to drop it early in the year? It can. Um, like, it's probably ready to. Um, or do you want to save it for Venice or whatever and later in the year and kind of run it that way? But I'd be nice to hear more about it um, in May versus August, September. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, if it comes out in, in May, chances are it, it plays in theaters in October, right? As opposed to, like, coming out at the September film festivals. You, you could be waiting all the way to, like... Yeah, know, they could do it the, yeah, right before Christmas. Who knows? Yeah. All righty. And then circling back to, like, the first... Yeah, the movie very beginning of the, part of the episode, the segment, rather. Yeah, uh, I picked uh, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. As That's great. Good job by you. I'm very like inspired by that choice because you didn't like necessarily go with like who's the best director or whatever. It was like this is just something I'm super excited about. Yeah, 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 and, and like I, I, I think these movies are absolutely crazy. John and I did um, a full series on them, and I. I tend to think like even like the the stinkers in the bunch which we probably universally would say is two and three but like um you can interchange them however you feel uh i i just like really enjoy them i still think they're really good movies yeah i mean maybe (laughs) not really good but like they're still like very fun movies at least right and like it's, it's, it seems like since Ghost Protocol, the fourth film, that they've just kept on like upping the ante of yeah. like how good these movies can be and just like how ridiculous the stunts can be. And for Dead Reckoning Part One, they've like shown like one of the biggest stunts um, in the trailer. And like right before like Christmas, I want to say like when the new Avatar movie came out, they did like a ten minute uh, feature about Tom Cruise doing prep for this like one of his most outrageous stunts where he had to like do like 300 uh, sky dives and like 10,000 motorcycle jumps and like, just like do this over and over again in repetition because he's actually going to like drive a motorcycle off a cliff and like skydive. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like who else is doing this shit? I mean, like as, as much as like, I don't like Tom Cruise as a person. Um, I, I think like he just, obviously he loves movies and he just yeah. loves entertaining people yeah and power to him for that um i i i think that this will easily be uh some of the most fun that i have at the theater all year i can i can already i can already claim that yeah um agreed and, uh, I, i'm excited to see what uh mccurry and Cruz and company uh have thought up this time 
Yeah, me too. Uh, I, you know, I said everything I need to say about it, I think, earlier on. It's just, I think it's going to be a super good good time. And I think uh, it's going to be a huge hit. And, uh, you know, we'll be looking forward to part two, uh, hopefully the following year. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, those are our most anticipated. So come back in January 2024 to see what we talked about on this episode, uh, but specifically what we got right and what we got wrong and what we're still excited about. <laughs> Hopefully it's not killers of the flower moon. Um, but uh, I guess yeah, <laughs> um, we've got a, what you've been watching segment uh, coming right up uh, before we do that. We'll let you know how you can follow us. Um, our podcast is on Twitter at it's the pick pod and Max you're at, mh colville you can also like us on facebook and it's the pictures no 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 we're not doing that anymore no we're not doing facebook anymore we talked okay. about it <laughs> uh, sorry it's it's been it's been a year uh or it's been a minute um you can send us an email at it's pictures at gmail.com with your most anticipated titles of 2023 or if you want let us know what you're excited about for 2022 that makes you look stupid like Max and I did earlier. John, if you want to feel better, I it's the pictures is still part of the meta network, as in we have a Instagram account. Oh, okay. Well, you can follow us on Instagram at... Uh, it's the PickPod. There you go. Uh, you can also uh, check us out on Letterboxd. Um, at, search for It's the Pictures there um, and see what we've been watching and cool lists and all sorts of other letterboxd things. Um, and you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or any other podcasting app. While you're there, leave us a review uh, and uh, five stars. It'll help other people discover and enjoy the show. And finally, uh, we have a Substack newsletter, which Max writes uh, at uh, uh, it's a picture.substack.com. Um, and what have you been writing about of late, Max? <laughs> Yeah, so there wasn't too much uh, to start the year yet. I did uh, a written version of uh, some anticipated films there. Um, I also have plans to review um, The Adventures of Baron Luchesen, the um, Terry Gilliam film that was uh, released on Criterion in January. Um, Another Sarah Pauly starring (laughs) feature. Yeah. I had never seen it before, but uh, Criterion sent me uh, a 4K of that, and um, I, I plan to do some writing on it. Uh, and uh, also adding, I, I guess appeared on a podcast. I think like it will be a few episodes before it comes out because I said like it was like maybe three weeks behind. But um, it's going to be on this podcast called um, Almost Major, and uh, they look at um, films from mid-major studios. And uh, on that episode, on two separate episodes, I talked about the movies Open Water and The Weight of Water. So uh, if you want to keep a lookout for that coming out. John, have uh, you recorded an episode yet with your other show, uh, Favorites of the Year, yet? Uh, We are still uh, getting ready to record our tournament for uh, Favorites of the Year on There Will Be Pod. Um, we did an episode, uh, not too long ago about December releases, but neither of us had seen Avatar in time. So I think we're going to do a little bonus episode, which might be coming out next week where we just talk briefly about Avatar and we're going to set our bracket of 32 movies. And then, uh, the bracket episode itself will be coming out in sometime in February with, uh, some special guests. So, uh, if you're curious, you can check out there will be pod where, uh, talking more about, movies uh mostly new releases and um summing up the year uh in a grand fashion very soon i guess i'll give a, br- a little bit of a preview for my uh there will be pod avatar episode by talking about avatar the way of water with you right now because uh we both have seen it um and uh is this did you uh, have you like kind of been on the record uh about avatar like did you talk about it in your other podcast appearance or uh, written too much about it. I'm, I'm just kind of curious, like setting the table for like, uh, am I dropping my takes here? Or are we both dropping our takes here? We're both dropping our takes. I, I never uh, got around to really writing about it after okay. I saw it over the holiday. Cool. So um, obviously I don't think that much like table setting needs to be made in terms of what this movie is. It's the biggest movie in America right now, in the world right now. Um, but, uh, you know, if you aren't a super avatar, uh, familiar, it is, uh, you know, the sequel to the 2009 movie, 
they are on the planet Pandora with uh, our Navi heroes, uh, Jake Sully and Natiri. They're played by Sam Worthington and uh, Zoe Saldana. Um, and, you know, in the course of like 10 movie minutes, about 10 years pass in the, in the movie world. And we see they had now have like four kids. He is like the leader of his clan. Um, they are, uh, you know, leading a happy life together, but, uh, pretty soon they are, uh, you know, uh, d- discouraged, I guess you could say, to learn that the sky people, AKA humans have returned to Pandora and that doesn't mean anything good because last time we heard they were here, they were trying to basically destroy the planet for parts and, uh, and, uh, financial gain and, uh, you know, there was war and all sorts of really bad things. And presumably more of that is on the horizon. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I, without getting too far into the plot, I think it's fair to say that there's water in this movie. It is called the way of water uh, after all. So uh, there's a lot of like exploration to be had and we spend quite a bit of time uh, on and in the oceans of Pandora. And um I think it was a lot of fun to uh, see all that stuff. Uh, I guess big picture, like I really liked the movie a lot. Um, I think that I had like a as good or better of a like movie going experience with this one than I did the first Avatar. I felt like visually this one like surpassed my expectations, uh, and I had pretty high expectations. I remember thinking that the first Avatar is like, oh, this looks really cool, but there were moments where the 3d like didn't seem like it was like as seamless as maybe, you know, he probably wanted it to be as a perfectionist. Um, and this one really seemed like it was totally on point. Like, I don't remember many instances of feeling like, or any really of it feeling like it was like not where it needed to be. Um, and some of the sequences were just, you know, really breathtaking, honestly, uh, especially like the underwater stuff, like the second third or so of the movie is like, just learning all about the aquatic life and, and how these people who live on the water get by every day and the creatures and everything like that. And that's just stuff was really magical. I told my wife afterwards, I was like, I would love for him to like, basically instead of like making more sequels to the avatar movies, which are obviously I've enjoyed to date, um, just do like basically a planet earth documentary series, but have it be on Pandora. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, Cause that's the stuff that like hits the hardest for me. So um, I'll kind of step aside and, and, and I'm very curious to hear what you think of it. Yeah. So I don't think like any of the stuff before they meet the water people works all that well. Okay. Um, I think the movie really shines once they go to the water village and um, you get to meet that tribe. And um, like you said, the creatures there, especially um, the, the MVP of the movie, if you will, uh, the Pandora whales yeah. uh, are uh, certainly uh, one of the most memorable parts of uh, Way of the Water. And um I remember like thinking to myself, uh, there's like so much violence in this movie. And like when you said like you thought lots of families were going to see this, I was like, I hope like no one under like 12 is seeing this because this is ridiculously violent. I didn't think I I, just to clarify, like I wasn't thinking that like really young kids were going to see it. I think more like people who have come of age since like Avatar and stuff like do they have a James Cameron connection? People who are like, you know in their teens or, you know, even like eight slightly older than 18, like those sort of folks, like, are they connected to his movies the way that like we were around the time that the first avatar came out? Um, but yeah, it it definitely is a little bit violent and there were little kids in my theater and you know, uh, I don't know. It seems a little bit much, but whatever. (laughs) I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's like outside just like violence of guns and everything like that. There's, there's plenty of other uh, high intense moments, and especially when um, the the whole idea behind these Avatar movies is immersion, right? With the 3D goggles, uh, goggles, the glasses, and um, especially this time around, uh, Cameron utilized the uh, HFR format, also known as the high frame rate format, and um, smartly he didn't do what like Anne Lee tried to do. I, I didn't see. Um, or Peter Jackson, really, with the, the Hobbit movies. Those are the, like the famous 
directors uh, who utilized the format before, but it wasn't really as widespread as in like I couldn't see a high frame rate movie without going to New York. Um, maybe theaters realizing that a new James Cameron movie was coming out with Avatar retrofitted their theaters and got ready because I was able to go 10 minutes down the street this time to go see a high frame rate movie. And he uses it variably throughout. Um, There's certainly uh, moments where I noticed right away that he was utilizing the higher frame rate and things look liquid smooth. And it looks odd in places that are not the water because it's something about the water and and movement there that um, that high frame rate really um, feels seamless. Um, For me, the Avatar movies, both of them are about the uh, experience of seeing them in the theaters and almost like their amusement rides. I don't think I don't think either storyline is, you know, all that original or, or groundbreaking. I, especially like one of my biggest reser- like reservations of this new one is um, Stephen Lang somehow returning <laughs> as uh, an evil avatar. <laughs> and uh, he has a son of his own who uh, they call Spider, who is maybe one of the most uh, like obnoxious characters <laughs> um, this side of like anything. Um, he and like, I guess there's a lot of uh, people complaining about like cultural appropriation for these movies, and certainly like Spider, like walking around with like dreadlocks the entire movie, um, felt uh, that way for sure. I mean, uh, I but I think I'd push back on that because like that's sort of the whole point of the character is that like he's adopting this culture because he literally has nothing else and no one else. And, you know, uh, and he'll never fit in because he's not really all the way there. And he's just kind of caught between worlds. And I found like that. Yeah. I agree that like the character is a little bit annoying. Um, and, but like, he's pretty critical to the movie. And I feel like that his kind of like, you know, not having like a proper family home, like, and trying to like scrounge something like that together was well developed. And uh, I think I suspect it's going to be important as the movies move forward. But um, what what do you think about the script realizing that they've used Stephen Lang to capture the kids too many times so much that, at the, like the fifth time that he captures them, yeah. like the little <laughs> girl is like, hey, yeah. "Am I handcuffed again?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it was a problem. Like the, I thought the the like climactic sequence was really amazing to watch, but also like went on way too long. Um, that was where I thought the film was kind of struggling. It's just kind of like again, you know, we're doing we're going back off the boat and back on the boat. Uh, uh, that's like, uh, Cameron's greatest hits. Though, I right? know, yeah. <laughs> we made that joke uh, afterwards, and then I went online and realized that like everybody made that joke. <laughs> uh, but it was like you know, I was like, oh, and then Billy Zane showed up with his gun um, uh, as the ship was sinking. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that uh, as as well made as that all that stuff was, uh, and and kind of compelling from a. Uh, choreography and visual effects perspective, I think that the end needed uh, needed to have a little bit of editing done. Now, so the movie obviously makes a transition to really focus on the children. Um, yeah. Do you think like they're like at all phasing out the adults, or and like we'll expect to follow these older children eventually? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, if that's if in a future iteration, whether it's three or four or something like that, that we're going to lose a parent or two. Um, That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I would say, especially in this movie, it's a shame that like Nate Thierry had seemingly like not much to do Um, because she was such a compelling figure in the first movie. Um, You know, Zoe Saldana, I thought, you know, was probably gave the best performance in the original avatar. And, um, you know, she just doesn't have that much going on in this one, uh, which was, you know, too bad. But uh, she's still good. Uh, I don't really know kind of, yeah, what direction they'll want to go in. Obviously, like, loss is kind of, like, 
lingering over this whole movie where it's just like everything that is motivating Jake in particular is like out of fear of like losing what he's gained from, you know, uh, fighting back and, and cho- making a choice in the first movie. Um, and, you know, it kind of plays out in a way that like it becomes realized, uh, you know, in a variety of ways. Um, I, don't so, know, I don't know if you noticed John, but like, I guess like Kate Winslet played like the yeah. pregnant, uh, She's yeah, like the wife person. of the Water Tribe's chief, yeah. Right, and like during like the press circuit for this movie, they just kept on like going through videos of like Kate Winslet like learning to like hold her breath for like yeah, a yeah, I did time. Yeah, yeah. and she I'm had, like, like some sort of record. Yeah, right, and I'm just like, but her character never uses like it's under the water during this movie. No. But, you know, she was pregnant, I guess. She goes and she, like, has, like, time with the whale, right? We learned that she, like, her best friend, Whale, just gave birth. So they're bonding. Yeah, and speaking about the whales, I think, like, that, um, ultimately their story is maybe one of the most tragic parts of the whole thing. That was that was pretty difficult to watch. It was. It was, yeah, it was really heavy. Um, and there's a whole lengthy sequence about like the whale hunters and like how that goes. And that was, I thought probably the, you know, you could argue like exactly like, you know, whether there was particular moments where they're exploring the water that are like more visually beautiful, but like from just kind of like a plot perspective and, and scene by scene, like I felt like the whale hunting was like, just like a really, really well done sequence that like, probably in like another movie maybe would have just been taken out because it's like not really like it happening is relevant but like all the mechanics like just it being explained to us is maybe unnecessary but i appreciated that a lot and i felt like all that was really well done it just pays off super well as the movie kind of progresses from there yeah so like i guess like without like spending like a whole hour on avatar 2 because i definitely think we could john i think i think like the movie is long enough it's it's important enough I think like it does enough yeah. with the form of uh, yeah. pictures, motion pictures, to like really give a lengthy conversation about. Um, I, I'd say like I'm definitely glad I saw it, and like I always knew that it would be another like, um, you know, like super like a bearer of future technology in cinema. Like if yeah, you want, right. if you like see a James Cameron movie, you can like say to yourself, "Well, this is what." like we can expect technology to be for like the next decade. And this is like the first movie that's going to show it. And um, in that way, I think that it's still a success. And uh, yeah. Um, It would be weird to see the third one because it won't be like that big a leap from the second one you would imagine. Cause like they filmed them during the same time and like the same kind of structure, but um, we'll see. Yeah, indeed. So uh, that's Avatar The Way of Water. You have watched The Bear, which I think is a TV show. Yeah, this okay. is just going to be brief because sure. I, I realized I hadn't been watching a lot of movies lately because I'm, I'm reviewing a TV show and then I'm just like caught up with uh, uh, Severance. I watched all of that. That was very good. Um, we had, I think we had talked about that briefly some other uh, episode in 2022. And uh, that's a, the Apple TV show. Uh, recommend that highly um the bear is an fx show it's like uh bill does like a comedy like each episode runs like a half hour to 40 minutes about like this uh former world-renowned chef who uh returns to his deceased brother's um sandwich shop and uh is trying to turn the business back around positive and um why there's a lot of like kind of like distressing stuff going on it's mainly a comedy and uh it's just like absolutely wild where it goes. It's a really quick watch considering it's eight episodes at about like a half an hour a piece. So I think like I only have two episodes left myself, Um, but it's really cool. It was renewed for a second season coming out this summer. So uh, yeah, that's the bear on FX and Hulu. All right. Very good. I've heard good things. Um, I wasn't sure if it was referring to a movie. I definitely didn't hear anything of. Um, but I haven't seen it yet. I think I'd like to. Um, there's there's a movie it... coming out that everybody was talking about called like Cocaine Bear. If it yeah, <laughs> that's right. There's also No Bears, which is a foreign movie. I think. Yes. Uh, yes. Jafar Panahi. 
Right. So, um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of bear action going on. So very good. Um, I guess it's going to do it. And uh, thank you for listening, Max. Thank you as always. Yes, thank you. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.